when you clean your body, the vessel of your consciousness, you deepen your connection to your purpose and the divine. And for the first time in my life, I tr truly felt aligned with my purpose and, and I knew what my purpose was. What's up my healthy fruit and veggie lovers? It's Kuba out here with Sam. What do you go by? <laughs> Social media? I go, Sun? I go, yes, uh, Sunfired Sam. Sunfired Sam. Welcome yeah. to Holistic Regeneration with Kuba. <laughs> Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thank you for coming on. And I'm really, I really wanted to talk to you because I really resonate with your whole vibe of being like the earth connection. You have like this earth goddess community and, and you're also into living foods. And I know you've like healed some issues with raw foods and fruits. So I'd love to like talk to you about that and get deeper into those, those topics. Yeah, I'm excited. It's my passion. So I could talk for hours about it. <laughs> okay, cool. So how about first you tell us what, what is an earth goddess? So an earth goddess is someone who has healed mind, body, and soul, or is taking steps towards that to you know, feel the universal bliss, the eternal bliss of the universe. And yeah, who has like a, a beautiful functioning body that they feel comfortable and confident in. And that's, you know, gained by eating living foods and living as naturally as you can. Okay. So um, maybe, maybe tell us about like, living foods what does that mean to you and then like your journey with living foods and how you got into it yeah. so every animal in nature has a species specific diet and we're told this this lie as humans that everybody needs something different or that the right diet is based on the individual which just isn't true. <laughs> Return to nature and you will find the truth that every animal, including us, has a species-specific diet and no animal in nature, well, so to find that, no animal in nature cooks their food. And so, you know, if you can't eat it raw, then you weren't designed to eat it. And every animal in nature doesn't suffer with the health problems that we do. Every animal that hasn't been domesticated, modified, or poisoned by humans, they don't suffer with the health problems that we do, and they, they are in touch with their purpose. They don't question how to nourish themselves, they know. Mm. So we've lost that knowing. And just by putting the puzzle pieces together about just our natural physiology and the laws of nature, we can find the truth, which is eating living foods, a fruit-based diet, is what's best for humans. Mm, so I like how you talk about you. The word that comes to mind is intuitive, like mm -hmm. tapping into our intuition. You're saying like these animals have their, they're tapped into their intuition because they know what to eat without thinking about it, without studying it in a book or studying the science. They just know from like birth, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, how I got into this was we, we all are in, in touch with that knowing we are all are in touch with our intuition to some extent, like we're never completely detached from it. We just, it's sometimes it's harder to hear depending on how much we practice listening to it. So I always had this knowing that, that if I nourish myself properly, that I could have a perfectly functioning body. And I suffered with so many chronic symptoms and health problems. And I had this knowing, so it was this, this frustration of having this knowing and then being misled by misinformation about diet and, and then continuing my suffering. So when I found a fruit-based diet and that if 
it felt so right. You can feel the truth. You don't, you don't know the truth by um, someone telling you it's the truth. You know the truth by feeling it. So, mm. yeah. Do you mind sharing some of your, like the suffering you went through? Of course. Like, how did your journey look? And then how did healing look like for you? I had one of the biggest health problems that I had was a chronic yeast infection that I had for all of my teenage years, like pretty much um, from when I was 13 to 18, 13 to 18. Uh, I'm 19 right now, about to turn 20. And when I, I it's, it was like itching and seeping and crusty and it was on my skin, it was on my nipple. And I went to, you know, conventional medicine failed me. I went to the gynecologist. She told me what it was and that it was a yeast infection, a thrush, and that it's common with breastfeeding mothers. <laughs> and I was like, oh, cool. So, and <laughs> like, why do I have it? <laughs> and you're obviously not breastfeeding at the time yeah yeah this 13 year old girl <laughs> and so um and conventional medicine doesn't have the answers they don't know the cause of chronic illness so so they don't know how to heal people and i went to the the uh obviously they're very doctors have a are very well meaning they have great hearts and intentions but the conventional route didn't work i tried antibiotics and it yeah the symptoms would go away but then they would just come back same with steroid creams over-the-counter creams and you'd be, you'd be suppressing your symptoms basically yeah just suppressing my symptoms and then i went you know the alternative route which was in the alternative world when it comes to candida and yeast they say, like, you know, they have candida, candida cleanses and people, I went to a, you know, nutritionist and everything. And what they say is restrict sugar, restrict your sugar intake. Doesn't it's, like matter. A, it's called FOD diet or something, right? Like some sort of diet for candida. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know specifically what it's called, but I did get sucked into this diet called a lectin free diet which was basically just completely restricting carbs, um, sugar, and some vegetables, like certain vegetables that are supposedly high in lectins, which um, we can get to that later. But I, um, yeah, so I got sucked into this, to restricting sugar, even, in, even natural sugars, even though I loved fruit so much, fruit was like, my favorite food growing up and mm. it is for many kids like, i mean like what's not to love about it yeah, and I think that's what you're talking about like that intuition we have we just don't realize mm -hmm. yeah chill like observe children before um they get sucked into any like sort of conditioning or like beliefs and they are like such a pure form of intuition before, before they, the par parents force them to eat their broccoli or whatever <laughs> yeah exactly force them to eat those chicken nuggets and sort of force them to eat that those that steamed broccoli so um yeah and so i you know i went this alternative route and i went for i i thought it would like i just had to be disciplined about it but the truth is, is that I would restrict these sugars and carbs and then I would binge and it started a binge and restrict cycle. Mm -hmm. And so if, <laughs> if something starts a binge and restrict cycle, if it is, if it's not easy, if a lifestyle isn't easy and flows naturally, then it's, it's not right. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> and but I, I wasn't listening to that, to that intuitive um, message. And then I, I, my mom, she, oh, let me talk about some of the other um, health issues that I gained from uh, doing this low carb 
diet and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I all I had been chronically constipated probably my whole life, and I think that's the root most, of a lot of issues. Oh yeah, for sure. And most people suffer with chronic constipation without even knowing it, and they use coffee and other stimulants to induce a bowel movement. But if they didn't drink coffee, then they probably wouldn't be able to shit. And so chronic constipation. I remember um, as a child waking up in the middle of the night with like extreme cramps from constipation. So I had never known <laughs> like what a normal bowel movement schedule was like before a fruit-based lifestyle. And other things I had chronic UTIs. I had a varicose vein actually from the high fat, high protein diet that I was eating. Like I was 18 years old and I had a varicose vein and I was like, what's going on? You had like <laughs> so, typical pregnant woman stuff. Yeah, yeah, woman stuff. yeah, exactly. Oh. So, and, and I had um, chronic styes and chronic fatigue, something that I struggled with from childhood that no one diagnosed for me. I just was tired all the time. And I feel like that impeded my childhood in a, in, to an extent, to living my life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. But so being on this high fat, high protein diet perpetuated my symptoms and and the reason that is, is because we're designed, like every cell in our body, our brain is, runs on carbohydrates, derives energy from glucose. So it just would not make, it doesn't make sense to restrict them. And, and our liver is fueled by glucose. And our liver is like the general of our body and um, is the general of, of detoxification. So if, if our liver is stagnant and sluggish from a high protein diet, lack of glucose, then we're gonna suffer. And yeah, so how I got to then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so how I got to this was my mom, she had heard about celery juicing. And speaking of celery juice over here nice. <laughs> daily celery juice habit yes and i so we just started juicing celery just to see the difference like you know i was still struggling with my health struggling with breakouts constipation my yeast infection and just, just try it out and after two weeks i will i felt better almost immediately after feeling like or drinking the celery juice. And then after two weeks of doing it consistently, like it was a huge difference in my, chron my chronic constipation. Like, it was like, wow, this is actually what it's supposed to be like. Like, Did you know, you I do don't it have to... First thing in the morning? Yeah, first every thing day. in the morning, every day, 16, at least 16 ounces. Mm -hmm. And we actually started doing it with like farmer's market. Um, celery, which I find even more potent than stuff you can get at the grocery store. So anyways, after two weeks, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> and then it kind of, that's what cooks kickstarted my journey. And wow, my just mom, adding celery juice. Yeah, just adding celery juice. It's like, it's when people are skeptical of celery juice. Um, because they're like, you know, why is that necessary? Well, it's like, it's a an herbal, celery is an herb. So celery juice is like an herbal medicine. And a lot more people are very accepting and take herbal medicine every day. So it's, it is, it's, that's what it is. It's herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. And in a toxic world, in this toxic modern world that we live in, like sometimes just eating our species specific diet isn't enough and we need things to aid us in our healing. So after starting with celery juice, my mom, she bought me a the medical medium book, Cleanse to Heal. And before I even dug into the book, 
Well, because like celery juice comes from medical medium. That's his protocol or the, what the protocol he channels. And I, before I even dug into the book, I just Googled medical medium yeast infections and his blog post came up. And he, everything, every word in the blog post resonated. And I was like, wow, this is what I've been looking for. This is the answer of that, that my intuition has been trying to get me to, which is, and what it said in the, in, in the blog post was that candida is not the problem. Candida, you know, occurs naturally in your body, but you know, if there's an overgrowth, then that means there's imbalance and the candida is actually fighting off a low grade viral infection that's in your body, mm. um, specifically streptococcus. And that, yeah, so it's trying to fight it off and <laughs> by starving candida of fuel, like, you know, like um, in starving your liver of fuel to get rid of this virus, which is glucose, that you're perpetuating the problem, which was represented in my life. And that what you really should be doing is eating clean carbohydrates to fuel your liver and help your liver cleanse out this low grade viral infection. So I was like, oh, yes, yes, I get to eat fruit. I was so excited. I was at work. I was like skipping about <laughs> and, oh. and yeah. So, oh, and also lower your fats. That was a big, that's a big component to it is lowering your fats because um, if your if your liver is stagnant and sluggish, it's not working optimally. And also, where our bodies just aren't designed to consume a lot of fat. Yeah, isn't so, there a disease called fatty liver or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have pre-fatty and fatty liver nowadays. Yeah, because yeah, we of don't make the connection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Too much fat. Consuming fat, like, hmm, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what's going on. Yeah, so and I, think, I, I think a lot of people are scared of sugar and fruit. Yeah, but so I, think I was. I, it's good that you mentioned the lower fat because I think like the sugar mixing mm. with the fat is a big issue. Yes. So the the problem with mixing sugar and fat, you know, like a donut, like when people think of carbs, they think of like donut or like mm -hmm. cake. But they when don't think about like the oil the and all the stuff that's in yeah. that cake. <laughs> exactly. Um, and by mixing fat and sugar, you, and so that's what I was doing was I was restricting my carbs and, and then I would binge on processed sugars and f like fatty sugary foods because that's what I was familiar with. Okay. That's because my brain was starving for glucose and it took the reins and it was like sending me to the most familiar source, which might've been a cookie or like cake or, um, and by mixing fat and sugar, you cause insulin resistance because the fat is clogging up the bloodstream. And so the glucose, there's not an effortless transfer into the cell. So, you know, if you're just consuming a clean carbohydrate, the glucose goes effortless, effortlessly into the cell for energy. But if fat is clogging up the, the bloodstream, lining the arterial, ulterior walls, then, um, then it's not going to be an effortless transfer and then the, the glucose is going to stay in your bloodstream and that's what causes blood sugar spikes and stuff like that. Does medical medium talk about this? Is that where you learned it from? Yeah, I did. I didn't learn the basic, like his, like, you know, he talks about the biggest food combining rule that you need to focus on is not combining fat and sugar. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, I learned that from Dr. Doug Graham and the 80 10 10 diet. Yeah, I, um, they talk about it in the What the Health documentary too. Okay, cool. Yeah, and um, so that's where you can find that too. And because it's just basic human phys physiology and a lot of people, you know, choose to ignore that or they're not educated on it. Um, so where was I talking about? <laughs> um, yeah that you would go back to like donuts or whatever because you're starving for 
Yes, yes. Real close. So and, and then um, so when I and then when I found the medical medium information and started implementing protocols, I pretty much went I went plant based overnight because all animal products are high in fat. And when and then I so I I started eating more fruit, having smoothies for breakfast and lunch and eating salads and um, that's when I finally got the most prolonged symptom relief that I've ever had had ever had before and so that really excited me and it felt right it felt natural and that's how you know the truth that it feels right it feels natural Definitely. and so that's that's how I started off and but my biggest mistake that I made when I started off was first of all not eating enough calories not eating enough calories from fruit so you know the fruit, average fruit is pretty low calorie per bite compared to um like to dense. animal products to dance foods or like high fat Normal. foods yeah yeah so but i mean but compared to like spinach it's pretty it's high calorie yeah, definitely. <laughs> so um when i first started off i wasn't eating enough i was under eating that's the biggest mistake people make when they move go to a plant-based diet because the food is less calorically dense and higher in volume though more water more fiber so it might seem like you're eating enough but you're not because it's not calorically dense so you have to eat a lot more which is fun i think it's fun to eat more food so especially when it's delicious and satisfying yeah when it's delicious and satisfying it makes you feel good like you feel so good after a meal you don't feel sluggish and so I wasn't eating enough and then I so then I started binging again and then my yeast infection came back so you know what I would but I would binge on like a plant-based food now so it would be like potato chips or something like that and then I found Freely they, many of you may know Freely the banana girl and she not only taught me to eat enough eat enough in fruit to carve up to carve the fuck up, carve the fuck <laughs> which, up. <laughs> which is her motto and also because like you're not only do you, does your brain and body run on glucose but you have a certain glucose requirement like you need to eat enough glucose so yeah i carved the fuck up and then i stopped my binging and i completely healed my yeast infection so you know Instead of eating, instead of just having two bananas in my smoothie, uh, I would have, you know, seven to 10 bananas in my smoothie. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, some people like think that's like crazy, like yeah, it's hard 10 bananas wrap, or eight bananas in a smoothie. To wrap their head around that, yeah. But yeah, you just but, gotta get used to it. I think people just need to start with like two, three bananas and build their way mm -hmm. up. Yeah, so like start, start with smaller meals more frequently so you can get enough calories. And then like start building it up and because when you're when you're used to eating high fat low volume foods your stomach like it's a muscle it's it's not used to stretching mm -hmm. so it's you have a small little stomach and then you start building up and building up mm -hmm. and i could eat 10 bananas in a meal easily mm -hmm. and and you'll have like a little buddha belly after you eat like yeah, you'll yeah, have yeah. a food baby but 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 the great thing about a fruit-based diet is that it goes away and like an hour and a half mm -hmm. it's like woo. and because and then, your stomach is full yeah and it doesn't like simple easily digestible fruit mm -hmm. it really helps push everything through yeah exactly and it doesn't have to go through the intestinal tract to become fuel like right out of the stomach it's fuel woo so mm -hmm. yeah and that's how i started off on my journey and i and then it was a very natural progression to eating all raw. Like, you know, I was eating steamed potatoes before. Mm -hmm. steamed as your potatoes. transition. Yep, as I, I think the transition is extremely important. People, yeah. too many people just like jump right into raw and then it doesn't work because, because 
you know, their body is so used to something else. Mm -hmm. So the transition is very important. And I just very naturally fell into a lot. Like all of a sudden the potatoes felt too dense. They, they didn't make me feel as good anymore. So then I just, it was very natural to just replace that with more fruit and more salads. So, yeah. So, okay. And then uh, how, what did you, your healing look like? You healed everything? Yeah, so... How did you start feeling? Like finally, uh, after you went through all that struggle, you figured out you got to carb the fuck up, eat enough fruit, enjoy every meal. And then like, what happened? So I first, like, you know, my yeast infection completely went away, which was like the biggest thing because I had struggled with that for so long. And then, you know, no longer constipated. That's such a big thing. Like no, no one realizes how much constipation affects your mood, your, how you feel, like feeling light and feeling empty is top 10 best feelings, <laughs> top 10 best feelings. And it helps you be the best person that you can be and it helps you connect with yourself and connect with everything around you because you're not being weighed down because you're not full of toxic shit in your like people don't know that they have like five to 35 pounds of excess of waste that's stuck inside them and i lost five pounds of waste like my stomach was like I had a, I was, I also struggled with a lot of chronic bloating, but I had that, like that lower belly mm -hmm. bulge that many people have. They don't know what it is. Many women have, and they don't know that it doesn't have to be normal. Like it's just a lot of excess waste and inflammation in their digestive tract and sitting just sitting there. So now, now all of a sudden I had, oh, that was a, a big, I think that was one of the immediate healings that I had with like, you know, very soon after I changed my lifestyle was my bloating. Like I finally had a flat stomach. Like I've always been like a very naturally skinny person, probably a little bit underweight when I was younger. And I, I but I had like, when I started doing that high fat, high protein diet, a lot of bloat. So it just looks awkward when you're when you're skinny and you have this big bloated belly and then that's one thing like not only was it large but it was uncomfortable and that's something that went away and i had a flat stomach and i'm pooping two to three times a day which is normal people you should be you should be you should have a bowel movement for every meal that you have yes mm -hmm and my skin started clearing up. I struggled with a lot of breakouts, mild to more severe, and like not only on my face, on my chest, on my back, on my butt. And so that's something that was really positive. And, you know, I have, I have a whole list of like chronic symptoms that I feel that and I'll have to, but I've they gone all, into it. They all went away. Yeah, they all went away. Oh, that varicose vein that I had on my side, it like it prevented me from sleeping on my left side actually. Cause it wow. was it would it would hurt when I laid on it. Mm. Now I can comfortably sleep on my left side. Nice. And not only that, but when you clean your body, the vessel of your consciousness you deepen your connection to your purpose and the divine and for the first time in my life i tr truly felt aligned with my purpose and and i knew what my purpose was and i was able to feel the bliss of the universe just naturally not using any sort of substance to get me there and, he's, and um, just experiencing what life is all about, which is just feeling the sensations of it. And that's that's what I think it is the meaning of life is feeling the sensations of life because you are a a divine energetic being having a physical experience. 
And if you can't feel that physical experience because you're being numbed by the toxins in your body or by the substances you're using to numb your pain, you, you get disconnected from it, so, from your true self. So what does that look like being connected to your true self and like, is it like more joy or, or what's it all about? Yeah, it's, it's, it is, it's, it's joy, it's pure joy, pure bliss, and feeling connected to everything, and because that's how it is, that, that is the true reality of nature, is everything is connected, everything, um, everything communicates on this other level and harmonious yeah it's harmonious and it's it's like taking your place in the in the natural cycle of life in the natural cycle of nature you know humans we we live in a modern humans live in a certain way that is completely disconnect, disconnected from the natural cycle of life and the natural cycle of nature which is like we are meant to live harmoniously and coexist with other beings and you know eat fruit spread the seeds and live harmoniously in community and in love okay so speaking about that i want to i want to get deeper into it later i will ask you about because we talked about diet and a lot of people want to know like what we actually eat we talk about high mm -hmm. fruit and stuff how that looks so later i'll ask you about your diet but right now i wanted to ask you you're talking about like deepening your connection with nature the harmony so what are other aspects of this like earth goddess consciousness that you talk about besides food so like li lifestyle aspects yeah yeah the like food is like the biggest part because because you know this is the vessel of your consciousness you need to teach it treat it with respect you know it already has the knowledge of the universe you treat it with respect and you will you will gain that knowledge and you will you know once you um cleanse all the toxins out but so the other aspects of the lifestyle is um you know i said freely brought me to veganism and one of the biggest parts of my journey was aligning my values with my actions or my actions with my values. And, you know, I was, you know, I was already plant-based, but veganism is the ethical um, aspect of not eating animals. And I had always been an animal lover or, or called myself an animal lover, but aligning my actions with my values. Like I valued, I didn't condone violence. I love, said I loved animals, yet I was supporting a system, like before I was supporting a system, or I was okay with, like, you know, I was, wasn't conscious of this system of suffering that was happening, which was, is like the enslavement and torture of animals. When we don't need to consume them for health, for, for anything. But, you know, they take up agricultural uh, livestock takes up 75% of the agricultural land, but only makes up for 25% of the world's calories or that. So people are, are and so <laughs> also like for every nine calories, so for every one calorie we get from an animal product, that animal had to consume nine calories to make that calorie. So it's, yeah, it's extremely wasteful and people are starving while, <laughs> people are starving in the world while like these starving countries are growing grains to feed the animals that are being fed to people in first world countries. So it's just, it's a whole system. Yeah, it's a whole system of suffering. Not only do does it cause extreme suffering for the animal, like you can't human, humanely kill something that doesn't want to die. Um, 
you're consuming that suffering, it becomes you. Your, your body is vibrational, your body is intelligent. It, not only that, but it's causing suffering to other people. So it's, it's, it's just aligning your, your values with your actions. And that cause that when you, when you don't do that, it causes dissonance and disease within your body. So that's another part of the lifestyle is, is embodying the truth and embodying your, your, your values. Yeah. You talk about that in your ebook. Yes. Uh, align, yeah. Aligning your actions with your values and your actions with your values, yeah. mm -hmm. you can access my ebook for free. If you'd like, um, I'll, I'll link it in the description for sure. Yes. It's, um, top, my top three tips, um, for spiritually aligned women to find ultimate health and get the goddess body of their dreams. And you obviously don't have to be a woman to read it if you would like to read it too <laughs> and just to see my perspective. And not, and also, you know, when you, when you heal your body and you get your energy back and you get your vitality back, then you'll be able to, to exercise and move your body in a way that's, that feels good and is building your health, but you need that energy first and that vitality first. I see a lot of people outside running and you can see they're just forcing themselves. They're forcing themselves to do something that their body doesn't want to do, that their body doesn't have energy to do. And you can see it on their face and it's not good. It's just too excess stress that's taking away from your healing. So eat high vibrational living foods, clean foods, clean fruit and vegetables, and then you will have a living vibrant body who that wants to move, that has the energy to move. Yeah, because you get you get lighter, you get a little bit more agile. And it's yeah, just like it, your body naturally wants to move and it's just easier to move. Yeah, do what feels natural. If it doesn't feel natural for you to um you know run a 5k then don't don't run a 5k you know do some yoga do some stretching and then one day you will have the energy to run a 10k mm -hmm. yeah. yeah just working from where you're at you can build up yeah, consistently yeah. but just going with like what your body feels mm -hmm. meet yourself where you're at be kind and loving to your body don't fight against your body cool so maybe you can tell us about what your diet looks like so i wake up in the morning and i either drink i normally i drink lemon water but lately i've been uh making apple lemonade which is like juicing apples with lemons and i really love that first thing in the morning too that's cool and yeah um so lemon water or Lemon water or apple lemonade, which I've been using, is um, it, it's really good for to kickstart and aid your liver's detox, like detoxification in the morning, because that's when your liver does the most detoxification is in the morning. So after I drink my lemon water, I take a walk with my dog, because you know I wait 15 to 30 minutes, and then I drink celery juice, 16 to 30 or yeah, 16 to 32 ounces. And then I have a big fruit breakfast 15 to 30 minutes after that. And that could be a, a big banana smoothie or, you know, with any like frozen fruit and orange juice. Or I might have orange juice after my celery juice, like, you know, mm. 32 or more ounces of orange juice. I like blending it with aloe vera. Aloe vera is really good. Oh, I like doing for... that too with my orange juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, it's so great for healing your skin from the inside out and healing chronic dehydration, which most people have if you eat a cooked food diet. And what else? So then for lunch, I also, or well, I've been surviving on like mangoes or thriving on mangoes for like the past mm -hmm. couple of weeks. I bought like, you, when you're on a fruit-based diet, you gotta buy cases of fruit. 
and that's a lot cheaper and and also it makes a lot more sense because you're you're eating a lot so i buy them wholesale especially and, the fruit that you're appeal you're drawn to and that you enjoy yeah yeah you you want to enjoy it and i really enjoy mangoes so i been eating mangoes a lot for the past couple of weeks so yeah so the past couple of weeks i've had like a mango meal for breakfast and lunch and sometimes dinner wow. <laughs> so and then cool. yeah and then um i might have a green juice in the, during the day and um and have like a salad or like a raw blended soup with greens for dinner or fruit with something yeah so yeah, i think what do you think greens are important part of i think fruit based um diet? I think they're important because you need glucose and mineral salts for energy and to, to fuel your liver and um, mineral salts are found abundantly in greens and celery and stuff like that. And what else, what else about greens is greens, you know, they have like a lot of great nutrients that you can find every single nutrient that you need in fruits and vegetables. And it's just that you have to eat them abundantly. And I think the greens balance out the sugars too. Yeah, like, what do you mean? And like, like... Like we eat so much fruit and then we get some greens and it's more like neutral. And kind of like yeah, if you're thinking like, like, yeah. Yeah, but in, everything is a balance. Like you can't, you can't just push, you can't just pull. It's, it's all a balance. Yeah, so your diet sounds a lot like mine, like very similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do I um Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, and like, you know, when I'm on the go, people like think like, I don't have time for this. Like my mom, she works full time and she lives the same lifestyle as I do. And she makes all her juices and smoothies in the morning and she brings them to work and it's actually way easier for her than she the makes it than in the, the morning life. before work. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's way easier for her than the lifestyle she was living before. We're like, what am I going to have for lunch? What am I going to have for dinner? She knows, she makes it, and then she brings it with her. Yeah. And then it's so, so easy because she takes clients. She she does brows, actually. And so she has <laughs> like eyebrows, like she's- Oh, eyebrows. brows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she does people's makeup and stuff. So cool. she, she has a client every 15 minutes. So it's like back back to back back to back back to back sometimes she doesn't have breaks and um drinking smoothies and juices is what's easiest so yeah 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 i love it like yeah. working at the office in the i call it the office at home the home office working at the computer yeah. just like drinking a juice drinking a smoothie you can yeah. like, keep working mm -hmm. yeah um do you ever do medical medium besides the celery juice like other protocols so which I, is like he has a heavy metal detox he has liver rescue smoothie like yeah i i did the heavy metal detox smoothie for a long time for more than three months which i think is like the normal protocol for it oh, nice. um and you can adopt it for life too if you wanted but oh, i think it's a good heavy, drink oh yeah it's extremely valuable because heavy metals are so prevalent in our life and they they just like they get lodged in your liver in your brain and um, heavy metals in the brain are actually, you know, from his knowledge of a big contributor to mental, like, problems, like anything related to mental health. And I actually used to suffer, another big chronic symptoms that, I, that symptom that I used to suffer with was um, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, which was before every single one of my periods, I would get extremely anxious, extremely depressed, yeah. either or um intense mood swings like just like a mental breakdown every single month and after and you know when i went on a high raw lifestyle um that lessened a lot but then it wasn't till but i still felt like mood swings before or like mental or like you know depression a little bit of depression before my period and then it wasn't until that i adopted the heavy metal detox smoothie that that completely went away and it's it was amazing because i had been struggling with that for so long so Ooh. yeah yeah which has the has banana orange juice blueberries mm -hmm. wild wild blueberry cilantro yes. 
barley grass juice powder or barley grass mm -hmm. or whatever i think yeah and spirulina uh, spirulina yes yeah and like i know that sounds like a lot of ingredients to some people but it was like you know you it becomes really effortless like you know you just throw the blueberries in there throw cilantro well, in there once you get in the habit right yeah yeah exactly and you have all the ingredients on hand and if you don't have access to wild blueberries there's wild blueberry powder which works oh, fine yeah. too i get and frozen blueberry frozen, frozen wild blueberry yeah me too um i get a big like three pound bag or, or like oh, nice. multiples of those yeah um so and what other protocols the liver rescue smoothie which is uh, yeah, i've never done that because it I think I've done it, but I've never made it a habit or never did it for long because I don't have much access to dragon fruit all the time. To red mm -hmm. dragon fruit. Yeah. yeah, specifically red dragon fruit. Yeah, you can, can get, get it frozen. white ones sometimes, but it's so mm -hmm. expensive too. Yeah. Where yeah, I, I never I never buy them whole because they are expensive where I am too. Like I get them frozen. I Once I had the powder, sometimes I got the powder, but oh, maybe I could offline. Order powder. Mm -hmm. um, good idea. Um, but I follow all his protocols when it comes to avoiding salt, mm -hmm. avo avoiding oil, and um, and fermented stuff. Like just in this 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 time of healing that I am in. Like you know, I might have more ferment, like have some fermented things, but I don't think they're beneficial for healing or conducive to healing. So you know, just avoid them for now. But yeah, sometimes we yeah. just we can go through periods. People think like, how can you sustain that forever? It's like, no, maybe I'm doing this for a period, like a protocol, a cleanse, or something. Exactly, and and it's what makes me feel good. It's not like I'm forcing myself to do this. So yeah. like, okay. yeah, and just like my natural progression from you know high raw eating some potatoes to fully raw, it's natural. Yeah. You no, know, it feels natural. It's it's intuitive. Yeah, so it's all about the transition. Mm -hmm. So how do the people around you react to your lifestyle? Uh, so my mom. How do you and... live this lifestyle in the modern world? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I am. I'm in the modern world. I am. I haven't like retreated to my my little off grid home yet. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I um, I live in suburban upstate New York right now well it's not quite suburban it's quite close to the city actually um and but at least i have my like little my trees i have trees around me which is nice but um my mom and my aunt when i came onto this lifestyle when i became plant-based when i became vegan they they were they jumped jumped right on it with me and That's they were like i know it was it was it's so amazing because um it's so great to have a support system <laughs> and to have people to relate to um and you know if you're if you're the only one trying to transition to play based or um raw high raw you can find that community online too if you can't find it in real life yeah. but it is very nice to have it in real life and and then you can also like through the online world, I found the Woodstock Fruit Festival, and then I, got, yeah, I went yeah. to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, which is actually in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. in yeah, August. and I, and then I met like so many people that I knew from online in real life. And it was just like so such a breath of fresh air, like like-minded people eating the same diet and like passionate about health. And... Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to the Woodstock Fruit Festival for the first time this year because um, Ted Ted Carr um, he he was like live in upstate new york you're like so close you have yeah, to go people like people fly from like australia from yeah. germany all over the world to come there yeah so i feel very grateful that i'm so close but yeah so i basically mentored them through transitioning because i was always like a step ahead of them and um they have reaped incredible benefits from the lifestyle um so you basically like from the start you were like coaching you're a coach yeah yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. And they both lost like a collective, probably like 50 pounds, like, like 25 from each of them. Wow. And so you already got, you already got success story. 
yeah like yeah early, exactly. early in your journey it was and it wasn't even it wasn't just like body fat it was like water retention from eating a lot of sodium and like and waste in their stomach and they look like completely different people we see like photos of them like before and like whoa that's crazy mm -hmm. like you look so puffy and like bloated do, and do they mind sharing it online? oh not at all i would yeah, be we're... happy to put it down here oh yeah yeah i'll i'll, I'll ask and see if we can take some after photos some after photos because like it's it's never like a complete after we're always improving so just like from but still from before now. from from that time yeah. now yeah yeah cool. exactly obviously it was it was a struggle the social aspect for a little while because my my partner didn't follow it doesn't didn't doesn't follow the same lifestyle as i do and my friends like you know didn't follow the same they're my friends at the time like you know they were smoking a lot of weed and drinking alcohol which I was moving away from mm -hmm. and um yeah they didn't and there were times where i did compromise myself in that way where i maybe i smoked or i drank when i, I really didn't want to and so then that was another tr natural transition was falling out of resonance with certain people and that's it's just part of the journey you know um and it's 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 it might be sad at first, but really it's it's a beautiful representation of your growth. You're growing into a different person. You're not going to resonate or connect with the same people that you used to. And that's fine. You can still love them and wish them well, but you don't have to spend time with them. And so I just, it was a journey of learning not to compromise myself and to respect myself in that way. Beautiful. And um, we mentioned you coached your mom and your, your auntie. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, do you coach people? Do you offer coaching to like public? Yes, yes, I, I do offer coaching to become an earth goddess for, to, you know, find ultimate health and get the goddess body of your dreams without calorie restriction, without carb restriction, without um, excessive exercise. Mm -hmm. Which sounds like a dream because that's what everybody advertises. Like, oh, you, if you want to lose weight, you have to car calorie restrict. If you want to lose weight, you have to carb restrict. But no, that's not the reality. The reality is is nature. Nature is easy. Nature is effortless. Nature feels good. So, yeah. return to nature and you will heal. So, for those of you who want to become an Earth Goddess, make sure to check out the free ebook that you have. Yes, the free ebook, and you can follow me on Instagram at Sunfired Sam. And there's also a link to my ebook there and to join my um, Earth Goddess community, which I just started to, to meet like minded women and, and commune and talk and, and heal together. Cool. I'll post all that below, but maybe you can tell the people, maybe you can give your recommendations for becoming an Earth Goddess. Yeah. How does so, one become an earth goddess? <laughs> to become an earth goddess is to firstly seek the truth. Always seek the truth and you you'll know the truth because it you can feel the truth. And then and the truth will lead you to a fruit-based diet because you are a frugivore, you know, you your physiology physiological food is fruit and so you're born for a fruit-based diet and so eat fruit step one over one <laughs> eat lots of fruit and you know cut back on the foods that lower your vibration and drag you down and like i said aligning your your values with your actions and living your truth and gaining back the the universal universal knowledge that is within you which is that you are a divine, perfect being, and that your body and your mind and your soul deserve respect, and just moving towards that every single day, moving towards living that. And I guess your biggest thing is like getting to that with the living foods. Yeah, yeah, and you you can't feel the 
I mean, you can't, you know, uh, spend hours of meditation and do this and that to feel that universal bliss. But, you know, when you're connected with your body and when your body is connected with the universe, your body is connected with the universe, but when you clean yourself out, you feel that, then it's like you're meditating all the time. You have that bliss all the time. You, ha you have access to that. And it's easily accessible. It's not being blocked by things. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, well, it was really nice having you on, Sam. It was really nice talking to you. And Thank you. I will make sure to link all your stuff below. So if you want to learn more about becoming an Earth Goddess, check out the ebook that Sam has and then maybe join her community. Check out all the things below. And do you have any last words you want to say? Eat fruit and live your truth. Simple. Eat fruit and live your truth. Yeah. <laughs> You're about the simplicity. Yes. <laughs> I love it. The truth is always simple. Mm. Yes, I agree. I think we just need to realize that it's much yes. more simple than we think. We overcomplicate things a lot. Yeah, like the modern world is pretty complicated, but it could be so simple. Mm -hmm. life, life could be so simple. Yeah, life it's, life is simple. The, is simple. the simple pleasures in life are the best. Mm, just tapping into our intuition. Mm -hmm. And it'll, it'll lead you to, to the truth, to the right way to go, to what's going to bring you joy and happiness. Yeah, to what's best for you in the, any given moment, right? Yeah. And I think it's it's a journey of realizing that happiness comes from within. You can't get it. That's what people are working towards all the time is like, get the house, get this, get this, because it'll make me happy at the end of the day. That's the root of their motivation because they think it'll make them happy. But it's realizing that you can't find happiness externally. Definitely. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Kuva. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> yes, it was a pleasure. All right. Take care. Thank you. You too. See you later. Make sure you like, comment your thoughts below, and see you in the next one. <laughs>